with some practice you could probably get this done real nicely uh, with more even heat it doesn't really matter which orientation i put them in but i've marked this one asks yeah i have the another tool that will work also but, but uh, that one is the best yeah Hello and welcome back to another episode of Building Vilda. This video is part 5 of building our unique drive system. If you are new on our channel and would like to catch up, you could start with part 1 of this series. Last week Axel and I worked mostly on preparing the fiberglass ring, which will reinforce the hulls of Vilda, where we made a couple of huge cutouts. This is where the aluminum cylinders will go and they will be hosting the electric motors. Now we have to prepare the ring and to make it ready for glassing into the hull. Before that happens we have to reshape the cutout, decor the balsa and rebuild the holes around using some nicely curved foam. So stay with us to see how that goes. Axel is trimming the fiberglass reinforcement rings that we made, removing the excess material and getting them ready for test fitting into the hull. Did you get the cylinder up there or what? Yeah. But don't you need help with it? The two glass cylinders? Ah, the glass only. Only the glass. And where is the other cylinder? <laughs> Under the pit. <laughs> <laughs> Next comes the test fitting and a bit more adjusting of the holes so that the reinforcement rings find their tight and snug position into the boat. So after drilling or uh, cutting a great big hole in the boat, step two is um, returning the strength to the hull that I removed. So I glassed up these cylinders and uh, they're over five millimeters of glass where half of it is unidirectional glass and they're very stiff and very thick and they're replacing the material that I cut out and adding more stiffness to, to the boat or to this section of boat than was there before, I believe. Once it's all connected, of course. Right now, uh, it's clearly weaker than it was before. But uh, first things first, we make things fit and then uh, I'll uh, glass them in place. And once it's all glass in place, it should be at least as strong as it was before and uh, hopefully a little bit stronger. Big hole though. So. 
after a lot of fitting or yeah adjusting the holes in the boat these two now fit into uh, the boat where they want to go doesn't really matter which orientation i put them in but i've marked this one aft simply because of that extra piece of reinforcement that I don't have here. So here it goes all the way around all the layers I wanted, but the last piece was missing a piece of uh, uh, reinforcement here. So, as you see, it will make no difference at all because this part of the ring will be cut away. What I want to do now is clean them up so they will uh, go in and out nicely and then I will start working on the hole. And now you might probably be thinking, but what are you going to do about the big spaces and gaps left behind the fiberglass ring? How is it going? I have no idea. This might might be a, a horrible thing. I think it's where we want it. The question is what happens After. when we when release it. it. Down, yeah. Yeah. When it cools down, it should stay, but I don't know how much curve we've actually put into it. But, uh, but like maybe how much you'll leave it like that overnight, I would yeah. think. Yeah, yeah, I'm not taking it off yeah. today. Yeah. What I wanted to do is like relax in this shape. Yeah. But I don't know when it's doing that and how much I'm forcing it into shape. <laughs> how much does it just return to normal shape once we remove the clamps? We'll see very soon. Yeah. some practice you could probably get this done real nicely uh, with more even heat good to know <laughs> clearly not a very exact uh, shape but I wasn't expecting that and uh, for what I'm doing I don't need it, so. so we are planning to cut pieces of the bent foam and to use them to fill the voids in the cutouts wherever necessary before attaching the fiberglass rings into the hull. Another big step in the process that many of you already asked about is decoding the balsa. Hey! Huh? I'm here! What? <coughs> Are you okay? Yes, I'm trying to. Are you breathing balsa dust? Probably. Do you want a little mask maybe? <coughs> I think so. Yeah. I just don't know how to sit because it's difficult. No, it's not easy. Oh, 
Okay. What should I do? Uh, like uh, a little bit more than that, but not much. No, uh, that's that's uh, that's. That's I'm actually just pretty good. Because this belt is about to die. It's pretty good like that because uh, <coughs> we will put uh, another five millimeters of glass on the outside. Yeah, I'll get you a mask. While I was working in the halls on decoding and making the foam puzzle, Axel started putting together the pieces of the adapter plates. These so-called adapter plates are an intermediary component made of flat fiberglass sheets that will sit in between the rounded fiberglass tube in which the prop will be mounted and the flat side of the aluminum cylinder. We prepared a mix with epoxy resin and chopped fiberglass strands and with this glue we attached together the sheets of fiberglass. It was important to align them correctly, work nicely and neatly and to keep the top surface flat and leveled. So now we find out <laughs> whether uh, we glued all that glass to all the wood and how flat we managed to um, get these two adapter plates or, or whatever you might call them. They both need some tidying up then uh, they will be ready to mount. This is the wrong uh, side, but basically what will happen, they'll sit like so. Here, I think you get the idea. Upside down, but I think you get the idea. What I need to do now is uh, adapt this so it will fit on the top of these cylinders like like so I don't, yeah you can probably see it in there and uh, take these holes out and actually add an additional two holes here so that this tunnel bit can be bonded or, or fixed to the to the aluminum here without uh, allowing me to remove the uh, the drive once everything's put together without the whole thing falling off so these three holes on on both pieces and then uh, make an additional uh, couple of holes for attaching everything together I think I should probably do that from the top of the or the bottom of the aluminum cylinder 
and uh, so I have two good fasteners that go into this block but perhaps don't uh, protrude into the tube. I'll uh, think about that some more before I decide. As usual, this task took longer than originally estimated. There was some measuring involved, some thinking and marking and eventually drilling the needed holes. For your interest in our project. If you like the episodes, do subscribe to our channel and follow our adventure. We appreciate your feedback and are happy to read and answer to all the comments. A like and a share represent a big support to our channel, so thanks for doing that! And we also have a Patreon page with our wonderful growing little community, to whom we are really grateful. Check that out!